Hey everyone, this is Leanne from Of Love and Ship Lab and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials on YouTube and Facebook. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss out on any of our tutorials. Tonight we have a sublimation tutorial for you on how to sublimate a doormat with the sublimatable insert that you can interchange. I purchased mine from Single J Sublimation and they are available in the rectangle format that we'll be doing tonight as well as a half moon format. We're going to start by getting our measurements for our insert and setting up our design in Affinity Designer. This will be a split design as well as two presses and I will link other relevant videos for you to see that whole process a little bit more in depth in the video description. So let's go ahead and turn this around and get started. Okay, so if you haven't seen these yet, this is the doormat we're going to be printing. And I purchased this from Single J's Sublimation. I purchased several inserts. It does come with one, which you can see right here. Now, this I love this because it has this nice, thick, heavy rubber bottom. And then you have this interchangeable insert, which you can change out for different seasons holidays, special occasions, whatever ails you, right? I'm a big fan of having a doormat for every season, so that is what I do anyways. I've always done the Home Depot doormats, which I do really love, um, but this is a bit more flexible, and I like that should, should you know this get dirty or ruined or faded, this is easy enough just to toss out <laughs> and make a new one. It's also less bulky on your heat press, which is a nice advantage as well. So, our first step is to always measure our insert uh, or whatever we're going to be sublimating because we don't wanna just go by the measurements that are on the supplier's website. They could be off by up to a quarter of an inch from manufacturing. So always measure. Measuring is the number one thing you absolutely must do and need to know how to do. I'm gonna be using my favorite little hyper tough um, tape measure today. I've shown this a few times. Let me get a close up. I like this one because it does have the fractions on it. If you don't know how to read a tape measure or you don't know how to convert fractions to decimals, there is a free printable ruler on my website that has this information that you can then use. Remember that knowing how to read a tape measure and use a tape measure is critical in this industry for your success to make sure oh, that you have <laughs> everything um, printed to the correct size. So it is worth learning. You are worth the time it takes to learn something new. That's Mercury Stardust for those of you who don't know. Okay. Our width is 22 inches. So I'll go ahead and write that down. And let's do that height. We've got also it's a little hard to tell on camera, but a little trick when you're measuring, if you really can't tell quite which line is hitting, just kind of turn your tape measure a little bit and press it down in so that you can actually see. So with that, we get 13 sixteenths. So we would add a little bit extra to make sure we get full bleed. So we're just gonna round up to 10 because we're close enough. So 3 sixteenths is a very small amount. Normally, I try and add an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch on anything that I'm going to have full bleed, and so that falls within that range and will be easy enough to just round up to 10, and we'll do our width at um, 22 and 1 eighth just to give us that, make sure that we get nice full coverage. So these are going to be easy to press very quickly. I will need to divide my design because I don't have a printer that prints this large just yet. I'm still using my Workforce 7710 over here that has been serving me well for a few years. And we're also going to have to do two presses because my heat press is only 16 by 20. So this will not fit on there as is. So we're going to be doing that two press. So I know how much you guys love that. Pretty much status quo when it comes to doormats. We're gonna hop over to Affinity Designer and get this set up and go ahead and um, divide out our design. And for those of you who have been missing Jasper, there he is. Say hello. Hi everyone. It's almost Christmas time. All right, let's hop over to Affinity Designer and get this going. I'm going to be working in Affinity Designer 2.0 today. Keep in mind that if you're using the 1.0 version, it is more or less the same. Uh, if you have upgraded, you probably need to 
adjust your interface so that your studio layout is how you would like. Mine, of course, has these panels over on the side. By default, these panels will be somewhere down in here. The tools panel icons over on the left are a bit more colorful in version two, but they are the same icons and they are in the same order. There's just two additional tools nested in here as well. So following along, whether you're on version one or version two should be easy enough. Uh, I am also working on a Windows device, so the Mac layout is slightly different, but overall it is the same. And always remember that if you are interested in learning everything there is to do with Affinity Designer and also have advantage of videos when new features are released in version two, that, then you want to check out the Affinity Designer Digital Graphic Design Masterclass for Sublimation. That link is below in the video description. It is a beginner to immediate intermediate friendly course that will teach you anything and everything there is to know about using Affinity Designer for sublimation and maximizing all of the tools and functions in this software. You can use the code sub that to save $30. There's chances to win prizes, interactive design challenges, and one-on-one -on -one email support throughout the course. So check that link in the video description and let's go ahead and move forward. The very first thing that we wanna do is always open a document that is the size of the page we are printing on. Because our doormat insert is 22 inches, 10 inches by 22 inches, we're gonna be using 13 by 19 paper today. I believe that the doormat design I'm using will actually fit on one page when it's divided, but if not, I would just be printing two designs or two pages. So we're going to come to file, new, and I already have a preset here, but if you don't, click on that layout tab, enter in your page size, come to the color tab, make sure it's set to RGB slash eight. The color profile that is most current is this sRGB IEC 61966-2.1 uh, option. But if you are using a Mac or you are using an older Windows computer, then the previous color profile, which is Adobe RGB 1998, may work better for you. Remember that your color profile is not your ICC profile. Your ICC profile is when you print, it's set in your printer settings. It has nothing to do with your document setup. Document setup is universal. ICC settings are not. So just make sure that you are selecting the right thing. If you want to add your preset here into your preset section, in version two is this little icon that looks like a clipboard with a plus sign. In version one, you'll see these options over here on the right, and there's a little plus sign at the top next to, it should say the word custom. If you click on that, it will add it to your presets. So once you have that all set, you can then click create. Now let's go ahead and import our graphic. We're gonna do this by clicking on the place image tool or coming up to file and selecting place. I'm using a design that is available on my website with the word welcome. You'll find that this graphic is available for the Home Depot doormat, the insert doormat that we're doing today, and also the half circle or half moon, whatever you want to call it, um, shaped doormat that is available from Single J Sublimation as well. When you see the downward arrow with the portal, you can either one click or click and drag to import your graphic. If you one click, it is going to import at full size, which may be too big for some projects. So just keep that in mind because I know that this is relatively close to the size that I need. I'm going to go ahead and um, just one click it. If you don't see your graphic off the edges of your canvas, come to view, view mode and make sure clip to canvas is deselected. When this is check marked, you can't see anything that's off of the canvas. And for a project like this, I like to be able to see what's off on the sidebars. So we have that selected or deselected and we can get started. The next thing that we want to do is adjust the measurements of our design based on the measurements that we took. Now this design has some dead space, which is going to give us a little bit of flexibility in the overall results that we get. I normally try and resize the larger measurement first and then adjust it from there. So we're gonna come to our transform panel, which yours is probably a little bit lower down here. Mine's just up here because I moved my other panels over here. 
Uh, again, my studio is laid out how I prefer. You can modify yours as well. Um, and your layers panel is gonna be down here by default. So in our transform panel, we wanna start by locking the aspect ratio. In version two, this looks like a little chain link. So this is locked, the broken chain is unlocked. And in version one, it's an affinity, no, in infinity single <laughs> symbol. And uh, when it's locked, it has little arms. And when it's unlocked, it doesn't. So just make sure that you make sure it's locked so you can proportionately resize something. You always want to proportionately resize something. It's okay to do a disproportionate skew for measurements that are like a quarter of an inch or a half an inch off when necessary. But something I see way too often is people doing this. And this looks horrible. You are ruining the design. You are not making a good quality product. Don't do that. There are many ways around it, which I've covered in other tutorials. So be sure to check out our tutorials on our YouTube channel in your downtime um, so that you can pick up on all the little fun things you can do to make your products look the best. So with that aspect ratio locked, our largest measurement is our width. And we measured that at 22 inches. And we wanted to add just a little bit more plus 0.125 for an eighth of an inch to make sure that we get a nice full bleed. I'm going to bring this over more on my canvas. Now we want to double check our height. Our height is showing us that it's 9.554, but our measurements were 9 and 13 sixteenths. And when we add in that extra 1 eighth to make sure we get that nice full bleed, that brings us to 10 inches. The measurements that I made this design are based on the measurements that are on the website. This is why you do not print designs based on the website. They are always going to be, no matter what the manufacturer is, there's always going to be the chance that they are around a quarter of an inch, sometimes even up to half an inch, uh, incorrect. That's just something that happens in manufacturing. It's not specifically the fault of the supplier. So just keep that in mind. It's your responsibility as the maker to always measure your substrate and make sure that you size everything accordingly. You will save yourself so much stress by just measuring and sizing accordingly. This is why we do it in every video now to make sure that you guys remember to do this. So in this case, what I'm always going to look for is if I have room that some stuff can be cut off and if it's a big deal or not. So because I have dead space on either sides of this, it's not going to be a big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and come to my height and I'm going to enter in that 10 inches. So my width is a little bit more, but I have this space on either side, so it'll be fine. Alternatively, what we could have done is unlocked the aspect ratio and just adjusted the height. And we could have done that because it was under half an inch. If it's under half an inch, it is okay to disproportionately skew. If it's more than that, don't do it. Um, if it's more than that, you want to do it like this and realize that some part of it is going to be clipped off. There's no background on this one, so this is totally fine. Now, because this is bigger than my page, which is only 19 inches, I'm going to have to divide the design. For this design, though, something I've been trying to do when I create doormat designs like this is make it so that it has easy places to divide so that you can print on multiple pages and have not have to make anything overlap and try and piece it together that way. So this is just something I've been consciously aware of, and I encourage you to be as well if you're doing something, a design for larger substrates. Now, if you've seen any of our other tutorials on the Home Depot doormats that have been like full bleed and full bleed with borders and garden flags and things like that, then you know that there's a whole process here of using rectangles to make them the shape of the page or the size of the page that you're printing and to tile them with an overlap so you can make everything line up perfectly. This is the best way to divide. It's a much better option than choosing the tile function because it gives you more control over where your design is dividing. In this case, we don't actually have to do that whole process. You can check out that whole process in other tutorials on our YouTube channel. I'm not gonna go through that whole long thing today. Um, but for this one, we just need to create two rectangles to divide it right in this area. So I'm going to zoom in, move on over here. I've got my rectangle tool selected and I'm going to click and drag and just sort of bring it 
I want to make sure that I am not cutting off the S. Don't worry about the white because sublimation can't print white. But I want to make sure I'm not cutting off any of the greenery either. So it's a very small space, but it is enough of a space. And that's all that matters. So there's our first one. Th this rectangle does not have a fill or a stroke, which is how you want it. But if you're struggling to see it, you can choose to add a little bit of a fill temporarily over in your color panel. Just make sure that when you are done that you have removed the color in both the stroke and the fill. You will do that by making sure they have a red line through them. We'll come back to that in just a second. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to uh, deselect and then grab my rectangle tool again. And I'm going to make a second rectangle starting right at the first one and bringing it across. Now, when we're creating that and moving it, see that green line that's right there in the middle? We've got a green line going um, vertically and we've got a red line at the top going horizontally. These are our snapping guides. This lets us know that we're lined up with that first rectangle. We mostly just care about the green line to make sure that they are touching so that we aren't missing any of our design. We don't actually cut any of it out. These are activated when you have this magnet icon selected for snapping. So if you don't see them, make sure you've got that. And they only appear when you click right on it. They don't stay there. So keep that in mind. Now, you got to trust the process here. First, make sure that both of these rectangles do not have any kind of fill. So come to that color panel. Click on the stroke. Make sure that it has a red line through it. Click on the filled in circle. Make sure it has a red line through it. It doesn't, so we're going to click this little circle and now it does. Next, for however many rectangles you made, if you're using a smaller printer, you might have one, two, and then a third one in the middle. However many you have, you need to make that many copies of your design. So we have two rectangles, we need two copies of our design. We're gonna right click and hit duplicate. Next, we're gonna clip one of these into each rectangle. I like to just start at the top and go down. Obviously, if you have a lot more layers, it's, uh, easier that way. This time we only have two, so it's not that serious. To clip it in, it's a one-step process. It's very easy. You are going to hold your cursor down on the... I'm just double checking my measurements. Okay, you're going to hold your cursor down on the icon of the layer that you want to clip inside of another layer. Hold that icon down, drag it so that your cursor touches the name of the layer you want to clip inside. If you're using version one, you will see that um, semi-transparent rectangle. It'll only go three quarters of the way across. So in older videos, I have pointed that out to look for that. But even there, as long as your cursor is touching the name of that layer, it's going to clip inside. So same thing again. Boom. And there they are. And when you come over here, they are separate. All right. We need to rotate this. Make sure you never hit the flip horizontal or vertical. Rotate so we can get this on our page. I'm going to move it down pretty close to the edge. I don't want to get all the way because we know our printers have a little bit of a border. I don't usually have margins on. Um, I just eyeball it and it's fine. But I think I have enough room for this other piece if I rotate it. So let's rotate that one. Let's see if we can... Let's see if we can make this line up. We only need enough room that our scissors can cut through. So that's what we're looking for here. I don't know if you guys could hear that. Jasper let out a very big sigh. So I am just tapping that up. Yes. And if you're ever unsure, if you ever don't feel comfortable with your edges, you can come to document setup and you can come to margins and you can select include margins. And if your printer's been selected, it will retrieve them from that printer. So now we can see I am right on the edge there. So I'm actually going to try and move that in just a little bit. I don't like to be so close. And then let's see if we've got a little wiggle room with our other piece. We do. We've got some wiggle room there. So we'll go over a little bit more. And that gives us just enough room for our scissors to fit inside of that little space right there. And we can put all of this on one page, which is fantastic. Always like to try and not waste paper. <laughs> Next, we're going to print this very easy. Go to File, Print, 
Select your printer from the drop down menu. Click on properties, set whatever your settings are for your printer. Remember, I'm using a Workforce 7710, which is no longer in production, with um, Printer Jack ink and paper. So I have my own settings for that. I like to save my settings to make my life easy. That way I can just come back to them. You can do the same by clicking on Add Remove Presets after you set all of your settings. You'll click on that and then enter a name and the save I icon will come available for you. The most important thing is to make sure that this is mirrored. You always wanna have uh, your prints mirrored except for certain substrates like glass. Pretty much everything else is mirrored. You wanna make sure that you have that checked. And when you're all set, hit that okay button. Hit OK again, and it's going to send it to the printer. Also remember that underneath this properties tab is where you do things like select your paper type. And also if you have um, color correction settings based on your ink or an ICC profile, you're going to do all of that within here. So again, once you're all set, click that OK button, click OK again, and send it to print. Let's go ahead and grab that from the printer and get it cut apart and lined up on our doormat insert. Okay, so we wanna go ahead and cut off this piece first, and we also wanna cut off uh, um, any edges. Remember that there's always that chance your rollers might have a little bit of ink on them that can catch on the edge of the paper when it's feeding through, and that can transfer onto your substrate. If you're doing something that's full bleed, you usually don't have to worry, but we're not actually doing something that's full bleed because these um, this little border piece is not going to be all the way off the edge. It's gonna be kind of in a little bit. So we want to make sure to cut off the edges just in case there's any of that phantom ink. If you've ever ruined a substrate, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I was very close in that little spot there. I'm also just going to cut off this excess here because it'll make it easier for us to line this up and make sure we're getting good coverage. know that this was very close to the S, so we're going to cut that off pretty close as well, since we're going to kind of eyeball lining that up. Once you have all of those little edges cut off, we are ready to line this up. And this one's gonna go on this side. That's gonna go that way. I'm using um, printer jack paper today, the pink version, so I can see through it, which is great. Some of the thicker papers you can't see through, I do not like that. All right, so I'm gonna kinda of do my best to make sure that I'm having equal space on either sides here and yeah equal space on either sides and that I'm overall straight so looks like we're good there normally I would use repositional um, heat spray unfortunately I just realized that I'm out so we're gonna have to use heat tape if you don't have one of these heat tape dispensers it's literally the best thing I've bought <laughs> in my time with sublimation I love that it cuts the pieces in these little sheets and I keep two rolls of tape in there at a time. It's fantastic. All right, double check that I'm straight. Tape it on down wherever we can. I'm gonna do a little bit more tape than I probably normally would just because we have to shift this into two presses and I wanna make sure that I uh, don't end up accidentally shifting my transfer. good on this side. Oh, no, we're not. Just kidding. Gotta move it up just a little bit. All right. 
So again, using tape is not my preferred on something like this. You of course can. I've seen people use a stapler before or say that they use a stapler. I haven't particularly tried that, but you can always do that as well. I'm perfectly happy using tape, but I do really prefer using the adhesive spray. It's so convenient for this kind of project. All right, so again, I'm using a little bit more tape than I normally would just to make sure we're secure because we are gonna be moving this because we have to do this in two presses. Now, this is 22 inches. Um, the, first of all, you could avoid doing this in two presses by actually just making all of this smaller and then it would fit into one press, just so you guys know. That's always an option. I just didn't do that for this because I love a challenge. <laughs> so, um, it's easy to think that the best way to do this is to do as much as you possibly can. But because of how small this is, that, that extra two, three inches is gonna be a little weird when you're trying to press it. You're more likely to get a line um, if you do that. Anytime you have to double press, the goal is also maximum pressure. This is gonna help alleviate getting that line and trying to, you know, of course, line it up best you can. So I'm actually going to um, try and press it like two thirds of the way and then have the last third on the second press. I do wanna put some blowout paper underneath as well, just because there is a little bit of an overhang and I don't want that to end up um, printing onto my mat of my heat press. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that up. Move you guys over here as well. Ooh. We're about to lose our paper. Here's Blue the Fusion IQ today. Why my paper's going everywhere, but I'll put that there. I'm going to very carefully pick up this. And like I said, we're going to do like two thirds. So I'm going to do about this much. One thing is that I'm looking for a spot that if I do end up with a line, it's not going to be very noticeable. For, so for this, that is definitely going to be in. Sorry, it's definitely gonna be in this H here. So I'm right here as far as that goes, which means that'll be the ideal spot. So put my top paper on, slide it on back, bring it on down. We are doing maximum pressure, 400 degrees for 50 seconds. That is the recommendation from Single J's. That's what we're going with. We are using Blue the Fusion IQ today. If you guys are wondering, that's all the stuff that I have bought recently and have not inventoried that can be sublimated. <laughs> I've got all kinds of good stuff in there. Um, little by little, guys, little by little. I've been asked many times if I think Blue the Fusion IQ was worth it, and I can say 100% that it was. Um, I don't say that lightly because this is definitely a more expensive purchase, but it has a ton of amazing features, including being able to save all of your settings for different substrates. That part alone is amazing. I really love this slide out drawer. That's hands down my favorite feature. All right, let's bring you over here. Then we're going to pull it out and we're going to very carefully flip it around. We'll, uh, Get rid of that. And let's see, there we go. The rubber is a little hot, but I just want to move that up. And I still need another piece here on top of this. Okay, so we can see where our point is. So we want to try and bring this all the way out to that point. Put that over top of that. It's a little tricky, I'm not gonna lie. This is actually great if you um, if you have like a stand or something that you can put this on so that you're not trying to juggle. Okay, so we're gonna try and get that as close to that edge as possible. If you've seen my other doormat videos, you know, maximum pressure again. We're gonna slide on in. Oops, I'm gonna try and kind of hold this up while I get this in, if I can. Some things are a little tricky by yourself. Okay, there we go. Slide it all the way back. 
pull that down. And again, we're going with our maximum pressure for uh, 400 degrees for 50 seconds. Now this part down here, since it's already done, we can actually just peel this off. Ooh, the colors look good. I like that. I like it a lot. Very nice, very nice. So again, with this, you absolutely could have um, made this smaller overall so that this design would have fit in one press. Not everyone likes to double press. Double press is a little bit of work. Um, it can feel a little bit stressful. So <laughs> don't worry. There's always ways to work around it, especially if you're working with a smaller press or a printer. Um, it never hurts to try, though. Uh, I always like to buy an extra of everything just in case I screw something up. put this over on our insert here or our doormat thingy here and our colors look awesome so with this again because this was um, because this has this empty space that made it a little bit easier to go ahead and do our second press part and not have any issues I am very happy with it the colors look really good let me try and give you guys a better view oh my printer's in the way There you go. So double pressing does take a little bit of practice. Um, definitely be sure to check out some of our other tutorials where we've done it. It is not for everyone. It can definitely present some challenges. Make sure that you give some practice runs. Um, you can always stabilize something like this by putting a piece of cardboard underneath it, nothing corrugated. Well, actually it wouldn't matter with this because it's kind of thick, but um, you could do like a piece of cardboard underneath it just to have more stability when you want to move it. Um, you could also use a very thin piece of wood. Anything like that will just help give you some stability when you're shifting so that you're not having to kind of juggle it the way that I just did. If you're using a landscape heat press, it's a lot easier to move things. And if you've seen some of my older videos using a landscape heat press, you'll know that. Now, what about selling these? This is an item that definitely has pretty good markup. Um, so you can get a fair price point for this is if you personalize them. My recommendation for selling these is to sell them in a set where you offer four inserts um, with the rubber backing. That way you can maximize what you're getting for them. One single doormat, probably $35, $40 is about where you're at. But then if you want to add those four inserts, you're looking more like $75 maybe even close to a hundred dollars for a whole set if you market it well you can do that with um with this and four inserts and i would do like the four seasons or four major holidays something like that that's very attractive for people who like home decor so there you have it there is how to sublimate one of these um doormats with the inserts from single J sublimation i am so excited to put this out for the holidays i think that it came out beautifully and i definitely can't wait to make another insert for the next season thank you so much for joining us don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and check all the links uh in the video description for everything that we use today have a great night